With universal control, you can control your iPad from your Mac, like so. Isn't that cool? Let me show you how to set this up between an iPad and a Mac or between two Macs. Let's go. Let's start by opening system preferences, both on the Mac and on the iPad. Now you wanna make sure that you're signed into the same Apple ID as I am here, as I am here. If you're not signed into the same Apple ID on both devices, this will not work. Then you wanna to go to general in the system preferences on your iPad and AirPlay and handoff. And just make sure that handoff and cursor and keyboard are both toggled on. Then on your Mac, you wanna to go to displays in the system preferences and then click universal control right here. And then you just wanna make sure that these top two are checked. The bottom one is going to automatically set up this universal control whenever the computers are close by. So I like to have this disabled because I want to be in control of when it works. I'm going to click done, put this away and go to the home screen. Now let me show you what happens if I grab my cursor and so I'm here using the trackpad on my Mac and I just drag it over to the left and you'll see this thing pops up. It's a thing that you kind of have to pull through. So I, this thing pops up and then just keep going. Boom, and now my cursor is on the iPad and I can open Safari, for example, and I can click here and on my Mac, I can start typing newyorktimes.com and I can open the New York Times. Cool, right? Now, if it worked over in your Mac's menu bar at the top here, you'll see this little icon. And if you click on it, you'll see it says link keyboard and mouse to Peter's iPad or whatever the name of your iPad is. You can always click system preferences or display preferences and you get to this screen and you can set things up. For example, I can actually drag the iPad over to the right if I want it so that when I take my cursor to the right, now it starts appearing on my iPad. I've got my iPad to the left right now, so I want it to appear on the left. There we go. You can also always go to display settings. And if you click that, you can see what each display is for. So you can say, oh, my iPad is currently a link keyboard and mouse. But you can also extend it to be a mirror display, which we'll talk about in just a minute. You'll see in this screen over here that there's space for more because you can actually set up an additional device here. For example, you could have your one Mac and then two iPads or you can have a Mac on this side and have a primary Mac controlling a secondary Mac. You just have to make sure that at least one of these devices is a Mac. It won't work between just two iPads. Now I'll show you some of the things that you can actually do with universal control. I've got this photo over here on my desktop on the Mac and I'm just gonna drag that into the Apple Notes app on my iPad like so. And boom, we've got the photo there. Isn't that super neat? Now I can also drag a photo that I've got on my iPad in the Photos app directly into the Messages app on my Mac to send someone a message. Might take a little second, but then it shows up right there. I can also drag a photo from the Files app on my iPad directly into the Keynote app on my Mac, which could be a real big time saver. Note that you cannot take a file from your Mac's desktop and put it on the desktop on iPad OS because that's not how iPad OS works. If you wanted to take a file from your Mac to iPad OS, you'd want to open the Files app and drag it directly into the Files app. Now it does live there. Now an important difference to note is that my iPad is currently running iPad OS. So even though I can control it from my Mac, it's still running iPad OS. This is different from a feature called Sidecar. Let me show you what that is. If I go to the display preferences here, and I go to display settings and I click on my iPad, I can say instead of using my iPad as a linked keyboard and mouse, I can say use it as an extended or mirrored display. Now watch the iPad and you'll see what happens. The iPad now becomes an extension of my Mac. It's almost as if it's an external monitor. So iPad OS is hidden here and this is really just my Mac. Look, my dock is over here and I can take this window and I can just put this window over here. This is Sidecar, which is different from universal control. With Sidecar, your iPad just becomes an extra screen for your Mac. If I want to change things back so that I can actually control iPad OS, all I do is I go back to this thing over here, the display icon, I go to display preferences. This window will open up. I click on the iPad again, and rather than extended display, I'm going to say I want to use the iPad as a linked keyboard and mouse. And there we go. Now I can just swipe up. I had to put my face in there for a second. And now you'll see I'm controlling the iPad again with my cursor over here so I can open Safari or whatever else I wanted to open. Now, if universal control is not working for you, there's a couple things you can try. First of all, go to the system preferences on your Mac, go to displays, and then check that under universal control, these first two check boxes are checked. The third one, it doesn't matter whether it's checked, but you wanna have these checked, okay? In system preferences on your iPad, make sure that under settings, general, airplay and handoff, handoff is enabled and cursor and keyboard is enabled. 
Next, make sure that you're fully up to date. So I can run software update on my Mac and say my Mac is fully up to date. You need at least Mac OS 12.3. Same thing with the iPad. If I go to about, I want to make sure I'm running at least iPad OS 15.4. Otherwise, this will not work. You want to make sure you're signed into the same iCloud accounts. So here again, I'm logged into my iCloud account here and here. It's the same one. You have to have two-factor authentication enabled on your iCloud account. So you go to System Preferences, your Apple ID, under Password and Security, this will take a second to come up, but just make sure that two-factor authentication is enabled for you. It should say two-factor authentication on here. You also wanna make sure that both on your iPad and on your Mac, you've got Wi-Fi enabled, and you've got Bluetooth enabled. I've got Bluetooth on right here and Wi-Fi is on right here. And you also wanna make sure that neither your Mac or your iPad is sharing its internet connection. Finally, if none of that has worked, just reboot the Mac, reboot the iPad, and then it should all work. Hey, if you like this, you may also like my video on the 14 things that I do when I first set up a new Mac or my video about my favorite Mac apps and accessories. I'll put those on screen for you in a second. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like button on your way out and have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Ciao.